also beyond what is possible. It was made in the Metallurgy Laboratory by uh, the student uh, in Raune. Uh, so it's microstructural effect, a micro, microstructural size, the static strength of material, fracture toughness, fatigue threshold for long fracture design uh, by a model, and then short crack range, the peak rate propagation properties, and the fatigue of the news. So, uh, as you know, there's the barrel has the peak of high pressure on the distance, which you can see here. So, this is the peak, which you have to the uh, actually nine meters long barrel. Uh, uh, and also in the last part of the barrel is uh, cut it, this material and make the specimens for the testing for the mechanical properties testing the practice and also for for the fatigue testing uh, so this is the diameter of the inners is 155 bar and uh outer and this is outside in this region where the high pressure but this pressure uh, we find in literature also is the measure in some institutes or in institutes, and the highest was 420 megaplus. So this is actually what we want to consider, but also some other institutes with respect to the, the missiles and the, the fractals uh, have the difference, uh, the, the pressure between 300 and 400 uh, pascal. So we are going to consider now this uh, pressure, but uh, for the structure detail assessment, uh, here you can see the, the chemical composition uh, of material. This is actually a bit commercial, uh, type of 35 uh, neodymium chrome more than vanadium. Um, micrometers until then you think micrometers. So this is the highest which we found, and we also presented. So we use uh, uh, <laughs> we also uh, made the analysis of the grain size by using the ISTM standard P112. So the result of the fracture toughness testing, which we performed here, is that we got the, the test uh, on the CT specimen. We have uh, here the applies uh, the support. Mm -hmm. And because it's 95 uh, degree uh, percent, we actually determined the T1C. And T1C is more than 151 uh, megapascal square meters. Actually, this is the also requirement of this producer uh, uh, for buyer, actually, for this uh, uh, policy. And also, uh, we performed this test according to ASTIM standard A399. But here you can see the difference in the mechanical properties. So it's the tensile test and average for the material A, this with respect to the heat treatment, and also in the material B. So uh, what we do with the fatigue test, we would like to determine also fatigue limit. Fatigue limit is made by using the this, uh, specimen, special specimen. We make the dark because we use the thermographic method. It is the inventor of it, supported by Ristan. And uh, actually, you have the thermographic camera and you observe the surface when you start to work, so to doing the test. Of course, the temperature from the room temperature starts to increase, but during the same time, respect to number of cycles is stabilized. And then again, it starts to increase. That means that you are over particular. If this is a stable, then you have, let's say, uh, achieve the fatigue limit, and then you need to repeat with the higher stress until you get that will be uh, actually increasing. We use here the technique for uh, fatigue with R0.1 that we always have in extension. Uh, and uh, also here you have the graphics uh, camera from the, the area of interest which we observe. And the camera provides, for example, here with respect to the different level. Which the temperature increase, and we with a 1050 megapascal, which is 62.1 degree. Before, for 850, we have 27, almost a little bit higher, but, uh, this, uh, temperature than uh, the room temperature. 
So we can see that, but it's not so easy method because uh, it looks like small chamber to protect from the influence from outside, but it's quite difficult. And what we did, actually the, the my students uh, recognized that we don't put only the different the measure during the fatigue. So for one specimen, we measure on the different level, and we have from, for example, from this strange range, between uh, 650, you achieve this uh, increase of temperature less than 0 0.4. And then with the pirates, you see here is 0 0.7, and go further. So we can have these points, the increasing, and then you make linearization. You're here in the point where the different temperature zero is actually a fit limit. So no threat, it is only when the, the tensile load of uh, this specimen. So this results are put here, and it goes for material B, and same procedure we use for material A. So we have the higher fatigue limits for material A. This is what we need now to use the Chapetu model. And actually, we propose this model for the two concepts. First one is resistance, third concept, and second one is fatigue and uh, configuration. What it means? This is actually the fatigue limit of the material. This is here for the short tracks, and you have here the grain size average, and here you have the track line force in blue. It is this track line force line over this line, then you will have the track propagation. If it's this line in the touch in one single point, it is your uh, maximum uh, track line force by fatigue in the presence of the tracks. But the crack will not start here. We will have the uh, threshold. And then instead of the crack, in crack, we uh, will have uh, achieved the fatigue uh, limit. So, of course, if you have the higher, longer crack, then you are always have the sum difference. That means you will have crack propagation until the critical crack line. So, our point is now to use this microstructural parameter. Because the grain size and grain border is actually barrier to fatigue crack propagation, and the crack will stop on the border. And so, if it's, this can be, let's say, the first the assumed crack length. And then, with the, uh, but in reality, uh, usually, so it means that if you have virgin material and start to be fatigue, that you will have some fatigue crack propagation. This is what we maybe remember in literature, and you see some very short crack propagation, which is stuck and never go further. Because this is the some kind of same mistakes in material, something that because during the, the, the manufacturing of materials, you have uh, that uh, some dendrites are not fit. You have some inclusion somewhere, but during the fatigue, this first time where it's very short, you will have the, some local, very small plasticity and dislocations in movement, and then the stop. So we do some kind of hardening of material during the fatigue process, and then we will we'll have no crack propagation. Uh, of course, if you want to have crack growth, crack growth to this very small crack, but with this stuff, with later, if you will increase your crack line force, then you will have crack propagation. Crack propagation until the critical crack line, which is actually depends on P1C, like usually in literature is meant. So we will make this last. So Mirko uh, uh, proposed respect to this uh, intercity threshold value. So this is respect to the actually D, D is the average grain, uh, grain size. It is interesting that it's not the biggest grain, it's not smallest, but the average fit almost perfectly. He published this in during his uh, postdoc in Japan and he made these thousand results in Osaka, and he recognized that exists this specific uh, threshold. And here we have the long track uh, threshold. So these two combinations. For this track value force determination here, you need R is from respect to the rolling ratio, we have 0 0.1. And here is the parameter of the, it's very similar to, to, to shape function, it's actually stress intensity function, 0 0.65. It is valid for inclusions or in material start propagation. So not on the edge, but in, inside, we can use pretty well 0 
um, merge of number there. And also here, you have this fatigue limit which you determine during the test by the thermographic method. Uh, and also you have the size inclusion. So in this way, you can determine this value. So now uh, the next stage, so we find this is this red line, actually. And here you have for this track road, now this formula, which where we put into the K respect to the grain size and respect this to the city uh, delta, delta K threshold and this threshold for the long track. And so with this value, we calculate the threshold here going to change and here can you have the constant. This is something what also corresponding to this constant with power C. Of course, with higher in pressure, you have the shorter pressure. The distance here, the difference is very small because the Q1C is actually very small difference between this A and B combination. But we have now for you see the 300 you have more than 10 millimeters can be A, of course, in C as well. And here is uh, 420 when you have uh, higher is less, it's almost half uh, smaller. So what we need to now to do, we now, now need to determine the, what is the critical microstructure parameter that crack will start to propagate under pressure of 420 megapascals. So this is actually the point which we got when this curve, paradigm force here is the green, and here is the threshold, and in point where this curve uh, intersects uh, this red line, it's actually our minimum uh, microstructural parameter. Here is the track length or area, depends what we are looking, but actually related to the track length. And we here recognize that this 130 microns. With 130 microns inclusion will be danger, then crack will start under pressure 420 uh, megapascal pressure. If it's the less than 130 microns in average, then you will have no crack propagation during the shooting. So this is actually what we found here. And also these values were quite similar. And now we can see that, for example, if we have the higher pressure, even 900, it means that more than, say, factors two, then you will see that this uh, size of critical size of inclusion can be less than 550 microns. But of course, because we are working with 420, here we have this 130 microns. So this area below is safe, respect to the pressure, and here is the maximum amount of crack length. But of course, if the crack length longer, for example, 150 microns, then for two both materials, we will have starting the crack propagation. So this is the point where the crack start to problem. Of course, during the, the, let's say, the shooting, the missiles, the this critical crack line is decreased. Why? With the numbers of shoots, for example, here, you have this range line is the 420 megapascal. This for 300 megapascal is the black. And when you start its first thousand shoot, you have no, almost no difference, yeah? That is, uh, here is uh, the size of uh, the this uh, uh, fact of track uh, can be steered uh, 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 in, in microns, so it can be even more than uh, five uh, millimeters. But with the 10,000 uh, should you have the, the critical size can be decreased to two millimeters. So with the numbers of this, the lifetime is actually limited. Even when you uh, have no any uh, obvious crack correctness, this part can be limited with respect to the material. So here you have the, the 10,000, here is 100,000. In 100,000, we expected that actually it is the end of lifetime. Yeah. So it is not unlimited lifetime of the dumb parts. So I would like to mention here that uh, in concluding remarks, that we are this, this uh, structure integrity with respect to the numbers of loading. Uh, or so respect to the, the uh, critical crack plan. And also because you know that uh, these uh, towers are filled with a different amount of pressure uh, respect to what we want to do with this uh, to distance or have uh, missiles. Uh, so this is the start from the microstructure. 
uh, size of the static strain for the fracture tapings, uh, for deep thresholds, for long track and short track, and uh, also to detriment for deep limit. On base salts, in this concept, it is possible to detriment the lifetime uh, for safe use of this power. And uh, also, uh, we see that uh, this uh, little technology, uh, the change of technology, also has influence on this. So it, it is a quite sensitive uh, approach for uh, that demand the critical track length and number of cycles. Uh, in fact, this that even the practical topics you can see is very similar. So, thank you very much for your attention. And that's